how meeting spaces impact strategic planning process and possibly the end product. So those of you out here who or out there who are getting ready to go into strategic planning, maybe you're setting up the, the venue and you're taking all things into consideration, this video is for you. I cannot tell you how many different spaces I've been in over across the country in the last couple years facilitating process. And I'm going to share with you five things to consider when looking at spaces. The very first thing we want to consider is the experience you hope to give your team. We have those teams that are like, this is going to be a retreat. We want to get away from it all, have a little bit more of a relaxation atmosphere. And they're going to look for those hotels, those rural community areas, maybe in something opposite of what their team is used to. So the experience might be retreat or it might be get in the middle of the action. We have other team members that say, you know, our board isn't really in our office space very much. We want to get them in the middle of the action so they can see the space we're working in and they opt to host it on site. They're the people that say, let's get right down to business. And those that are like, you know, we want some social time in this. So before we look at other venues, we first take into consideration what experience do we want to give our team? Once we know social, get down to work, then we move into the process requirements. You're going to want to connect with your facilitator on this, whether they're volunteer, paid facilitator. They typically have a process that they're going to implement that will have very specific requirements. So, for example, it might be a wall space requirement. The process we use requires lots of wall space, but no tech. But we also need to be able to hang things on the walls. So we say we need unobstructed wall space and even give a little map to say how much wall space is needed for each session. So how much wall space is needed? Then there's tables. Are you going for the old school conference style so everyone can see each other? Are you looking at the horseshoe shape where you've got kind of a focus wall and you've got your tables in a U shape towards that focus wall so everyone's on the outside, but you can swing chairs around in the middle if you're going to go into small group conversations. That's my personal favorite. Then you might just have classroom style or other things. They don't tend to be as conducive to group conversations. But what are the table requirements? Chairs. We had a group recently that had really terribly uncomfortable chairs and they thought we're going to be here for two days and one brilliant board member took upon themselves to order some things, some seat cushions and said we know this venue has really nice formal chairs, but they're not great for sitting in for two consecutive days. So they brought little seat cushions and made sure that they were comfortable for the group. So how many chairs do you need? What is the layout of those? When I move my small groups into breakout sessions, I don't like them to have to drag their chairs. So it's always nice to have extra chairs in the room that you can scatter around so people can move without dragging furniture around. Next are you going to have breakout sessions. So the placement of table and chairs could also depend on is this a small group conversation or do we have enough people in the room that we might need to break into side conversations. I've mentioned in earlier videos the model think pair share to get your team involved. That typically involves breaking off to have smaller group conversations. Chairs and extra spaces are really helpful for that. So we've got wall space, we've got tables, we've got chairs. Once we think about the process requirements, we want to think about the technology. Do we need audiovisual equipment or are we going old school the paper, the sticky wall that facilitators use, and that type of stuff. Number four on my list are productivity killers. These are the things about venues that can make or break the contributions. Number one, space. Is there enough space for people to get up out of their chair and walk around without everyone having to suck their gut in and pull their chair in? Most people want to be able to run to the restroom without interrupting an entire session. They may find it embarrassing to run out in the middle of the session and they will sit there, but they're not going to be their best participant make sure people can get in and out of the room freely without interrupting the session. Another productivity killer is climate control. We have traveled all over the country. I cannot tell you how many times over the past year we've ended up in venues that were either way too hot or way too cold. And while we can always, you know, bundle up or do what we need to do, we're asking participants to give their best contributions. And if they're not really comfortable, it's going to be hard to get that from them. So we've got that. And then finally, fueling stations. People do their best work when they're fueled. Make sure there's plenty of water. Maybe it's tea, maybe it's coffee, something else, something caffeinated and plenty of water throughout the day. And then some snacks that are fuel foods, your nuts, your chocolates, the things that you can have in a room, um, obviously paying attention to allergies, but you know, avoid those coma inducing, those sugar coma inducing treats throughout the entire day, especially after lunch, because it's harder to keep people's attention. And finally, the last thing to consider when you're looking at your venues are the venue or the host requirements and opportunities. Look at those places that have great open meeting spaces, access to the outdoors, but also be sure to pay attention to their restrictions. We've had venues say, yes, we have lots of wall space, but you're not allowed to hang anything on it. 
or we can't move this conference table, or we can't accommodate your setup time and your breakdown time. So make sure that you've run through the full list of the four things I mentioned above before you book that venue.